This show is sponsored by Set for Life Insurance, the ultimate client experience in the insurance industry. Are you looking for the perfect insurance coverage that suits your needs? Founded in 1993 by President Jamie K. Fleischner, Set for Life Insurance specializes in individual life, disability, and long-term care insurance. As brokers, they represent numerous companies in the industry, ensuring that their clients get the best products at the most cost-effective rate. What sets Set for Life Insurance apart? You'll enjoy special discounts, priority underwriting handling, and even exceptions in the underwriting process. So why wait? Contact Set for Life Insurance today and let them be your insurance partner for life. Visit their website at www.setforlifeinsurance.com or call them toll free at 1-888-553-3559. Finally, a source of raw, real, and honest information on healthcare issues that matter most. Welcome to BS Free MD. From the latest medical information to how to stay sane as a doctor or a patient, no subject is taboo, no BS is allowed. Now, let's welcome your hosts, Doctors May and Tim Heinmarsh. Well, welcome back. Everybody, yes. Um, welcome to another episode of Doctails with Cocktails. It's Wednesday evening, oh, probably uh, Monday if you're listening to it on the replay, with a lovely Tim Hindmarsh May. And uh, oh, it's hair day yesterday. You're looking fine. I know. Yeah, it's amazing. And your T-shirt of the week is uh, my full throttle. The full throttle saloon from the wonderful. Sturgis, South Dakota. It is the biggest biker bar in the world. And when I describe it to people, they cannot understand. I said this biker bar is about eight acres of bar. Maybe more. Maybe about 12 acres. The bar, bar is? The bar. Wow. The bar. It's it's like numerous bars, indoor, outdoor, vendors. You can buy, you can buy um, handcrafted whiskey. You can buy beer. You can buy whatever you want. And you can buy silencers. Where can I get one of those for, silencers? For guns, not for husbands. <laughs> I, it's entirely different. Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, you must be watching us on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, no, it's not Twitter. It's X. X, but they still get the bird. They need to b- yeah. change their logo. And this week. For the first time ever. Rumble. Rumble. Yes. Because Gary's right. We got kicked off of uh, YouTube last week. Imagine it lasted why, eighteen ima- hours. Imagine that, and imagine why. You talk about studies about the study for the thing that happened over the last three years with the thing that rhymes with shot. Oh, I said it. <laughs> or rhymes with Maxine. There you go. Uh, and then their little fact checkers think that we are causing potential harm and dangerous practices. Yes. I can't remember the exact word. I put it up on the Facebook. I mean, the well, Instagram anything that story. goes against the World Health Organization. In other words, as Donald Trump would say, China gets pulled. Yeah. Well, anyway, <coughs> we don't need them it's pulled. We don't need them. <laughs> so I'm thinking I could. OK. I'm... And anyway, Queen D our, uh business manager and editor extraordinaire and more and uh, got us on essentially Rumble. babysitting <laughs> service for us exactly uh she uh she got us on the rumbles we have enough rumble su- subscribers live. for free to lives. Go live yes so yeah. this is exciting and i'm excited too See what we happens. like the, we like the rumbles They're, they are actually like free speech and believe okay. it or not okay you need to understand this well, believe it or not rumble is a canadian company that now has relocated to Longboat Key, Florida. No way. Literally, literally three miles from our new house. Our sort of backyard. <laughs> so we like the rumbles. I love it. Well, what are we talking about tonight? Uh, of course, Tim's going to bring you his finest in the news topic. Oh, boy. Topics to uh, tickle your fancy. It will blow your mind or uh, your colon. Oh, or both. shoot. I can 
Okay, you can smell it from here. So I have a. Uh, it doesn't smell like teen spirit. He basically says that uh, he's titled this Don't Let This Happen to You. Don't uh, let this happen to you. Well, then I don't know. Maybe I should do mine first. My news update is um, thrifting gone bad. I guess I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and we um, are going to update you and announce the. It's not the winner of the contest, but you guys had to guess the photo on our social posts that was part of the what year it was serum um newsletter sign up for a newsletter if you haven't signed up for it and i made a mistake and said the answer is in the newsletter and i forgot to give it to desiree to publish so we will share with you what year that was um liar then i have a story on the real longevity expert and his advice uh, our cocktail of the night and then um if we can get to this, I will. I got asked by a friend, um, close neighbor, acquaintance, if I knew anything about the new miracle beds from Tesla. And I'm like, what? She says that she's getting one anytime soon. And I had not heard of it. So I had to look into this. So, fact or. I, what, which fiction, is odd. Truth or. Which is dare. odd because I've been performing miracles in bed for the last several decades. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Sometimes you leave me speechless. Moving uh, on. We, in Christian terms, that is the laying on of hands. Oh my God. <laughs> I love doing that. It makes me so happy. And now I've lost my train of thought. We yes, just wrap it up with what's coming out on the podcast for the week, my as well skill. as Tim's uh, recent door smash and dash uh, encounter. Yes. So, go. oh boy, we, we got to get after it. It's, we're already almost seven minutes into this. And we have said nothing of any real substantial use to people. All right. Okay. Uh, let, let's get to the in the news. Okay. Fun. Let me do mine first. I don't even know if you've got the slide. Can you? Um, yes. I can do this. Look the, at this. It's the one. I have uh, technology. This. No, that's not it. It's this? the other one. No. This? No. This? Oh, that's a good one. Then I, I, I don't have it. Okay, you didn't, you didn't it post me. it. Well, it was a photo of happy people at Goodwill. Oh, I thought I put that in, in a, there. But the shopping cart. Well, I suck. And anyway, on to my uh, story of the week that I found. This did come out September 7th in the Associated Press. It happened in... Goodyear, Arizona, close to our fine son's stomping grounds. Um, it was the strangest item recently, I would say not ever, but recently found at a Goodwill store. Let me guess. It was Mexican alien mummies with three fingers. Oh, how did you guess? That. Because it's on Fox News tonight. Alien, Mexican alien mummies. <laughs> Did you all see it? If not, don't go running <laughs> so, from our show to the news, but check it out later. They strangely look exactly like E.T. from the show. E. Well, e. why wouldn't they? I know. Funny how that is. But they're Mexican. And of course, he's insisting they're real because their bones are just st structured just like human. Mm, whatever. Anyway, get this. Um, so employees of, uh, at the Goodwill store um, knew exactly uh, what to do when they found what looked like a human skull in one of the donation boxes. Oh, my. They called the police. Good for them. Officers responded to the store on Tuesday night, took possession of the skull, which was covered in spots, had its upper front teeth attached, plus a false eye in the left socket. Arr, I was just shiver me timbers. Made me laugh because a friend online was posting about all her treasures yesterday and today when she went thrifting here in Oregon. So nothing quite like this. Anyway, for real, the skull was transported to the Maricopa County Medical Examiner's Office, uh, uh, where authorities confirmed that it is in fact a real human skull, and it appears. Uh, it's historic, has no forensic significance, doesn't seem to be associated with the crime. They don't know who donated the skull and what will happen to its final disposition. But um, well, we have a skull. Was, that was the move your head. See yes. back there. No teeth, no teeth, no teeth and no fake eyes. But it's not they don't give you you don't you can't it's buy not got the human sinew skulls. attached to it. 
they make casts Replicas. and then they cast them in some sort of bone like something or other. So just, and they're very realistic. So Gina who's on here. She has this greatest. It's where I'm getting rid of all of my crap right now is on her auction. Site no, if, if you're you getting rid of amazing things we no longer ye- need that we're, we're repurposing. Well, my crap to other treasures. families, my crap, people's treasures it doesn't mean it's crap. There will be no don't s- denigrate how amazing the stuff is that you're getting rid of. <laughs> Which is amazing because she has this box out, out out in the front of the house. So people pick up the things that they've bought and then they rummage through the box and throw either they either pick stuff out of it or they just throw the envelope of money in there. And it, it, it like essentially we are running essentially what looks to the neighbors like a drug mule operation. And what sounds like to us in the house like raccoons stealing <laughs> things <laughs> from <does>. us because <laughs> it literally sounds like raccoons getting into when your they, trash when they open the and then, lid and, and then, dig around yeah it does sound like raccoons but gina don't worry there'll be i'll post no skulls for sale no body parts uh we've left those under the crawl space and when the guy came to do the inspection he didn't find them so we're good that was amazing that we had a, an unbelievably thorough inspection of this home. Yeah. And it went as it good as it could go. Didn't find the skulls. <clears throat> so anyway. Which is good. No yeah. skulls That's on good. the Sugar City 48-hour no, auction. Yeah, no John Wayne Gacy stuff. Wow. That's good. Okay. No clown suits and no Moving smelly dead bodies. right along from that freakish uh, thrifting find, what do you want to tell people to not let happen to them? This. Diarrhea all the way through airplane forces Delta flight to do a U-turn and it gets better. I have video all the way through to find. No, I'll show this. Okay. To find all the way through, they literally, they they called, they were flying to Europe (laughs) from Atlanta and somebody two hours into this, somebody had explosive, uncontrollable diarrhea, which could happen to any of us. And they shat all the way down the (laughs) aisle of the aircraft, causing a massive biohazard. And they literally everybody's worst nightmare. No, they literally called in. It's like a request to uh, request to return to Atlanta. We have had a diarrhea episode. (laughs) We are flying a biohazard at this time. And like, oh my gosh! So 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 here is the video. There's the video. Look at that. Okay, I will remove our heads. Spots covered with yes. looks like paper towels yes. that they taped to the ground. Yes, with the yes, the floor. Yes. I mean. but it's it's Code even brown. better. Exactly, <laughs> it's <Code> even. Brown. <laughs> it's even Requesting better if you read sugar. it in the New York Post. <laughs> Gross. Okay, I got to read this. It's so it's so perfect. Grossed out passengers ha- oh, have detailed the no, ordeal of being so stuck horrible. on Delta, now known as diarrhea flight that was forced to turn back after someone could not contain their explosive diarrhea, which left crew ripping out the carpet to contain the bio. It was an experience that I hope no one has to go through. Marie Beals Bassinger told the Daily Mail of the flight that was diverted back to Atlanta on Friday, just two hours into its eight hour trek to Birth alone. Oh, can you imagine? I hope the poor woman that had this experience recovers. She said of the sickened passenger, the pilot of flight DL-194 had warned air traffic control there was a biohazard issue with a passenger who uh, had diarrhea all the way through the airplane. <laughs> so... What if so you have to this go, is why. What if you also have to? This like, is why. Go to the bathroom and, like, heaven forbid, you just pee your pants because you don't want to go in there. I know, I know, but this is why. That's sad. This That's is where person. They I know. Have, I feel like, bad. I do. Okay. I do. I feel they bad for that. Them. I'm thinking the worst food poisoning or like no. ulcerative colitis or Crohn's. But I want to. I want to give a public service announcement or, because we we don't practice medicine on the internet. 
but we do give generic advice. I should have ate more cheese. No. <laughs> Go to an airport. Airport. I defy you. There is McDonald's. There's Chick-fil-A. Oh. There's local restaurants. This is why there's no Taco Bell <laughs> in airports. I think. I don't think I've ever seen a single Taco Bell because they know there will be shit diversions hard and fast. Oh, come on. They're all crap. They're all crap inducing. <laughs> They're all crap. McDonald's inducing. is terrible. I, I will admit, though, I love it so. But it does not do <laughs> what? It is not the, the same. Does. The bell the does bell. not do. or uh, The bell is... has its own level. But I can guess. you? So what I want to know wow. is, did the, did the oxygen masks fall down? Oxygen masks? Yes. It's like, uh, uh, please place a mask on yourself first and then uh, assist those around you. Take a deep breath. Make sure your nose and mouth are sealed. And the smell of shit will go away <laughs> as you breathe on 100% oxygen on your way to Barthelona. Thank you for flying Delta and Diarrhea Airlines. We appreciate your service. And if you could leave us a rating at the end of this flight, <laughs> as well as sign up for a credit card, you'll get 45 million miles extra because... <laughs> You had to inhale shit all the way to your thank you for flying Delta. Yeah, I think you get to be the diamond member after that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Like, <laughs> seriously. Frightening. Like, and then can you my, imagine I can you imagine those, going because... home, right? So just just imagine this poor woman. <laughs> Why you're... Like seriously, imagine right. this poor woman. She goes home, right? It's just like you know, calls the Uber, goes back to her house in, you know, Atlanta or whatever. Oh, honey, what happened? Uh, well, you know, not much. I went, I got on the plane. Not much. I had Taco Bell and I shit myself up the entire aisle of the aircraft <laughs> and I created a massive biohazard and they had to like turn the plane around and it cost Delta Airlines tens of thousands of dollars in lost hours and fuel and pissed off 250 fellow passengers. So do the passengers get reimbursed? Right. Here's your. Uh, uh, we are experiencing some turbulence in somebody's colon. Uh, we have turbulent colon. If you could buckle up and pinch your butt cheeks, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I've had an upset stomach on a plane, and I remember. I won't go into more detail, but just that's a nightmare. No, it a is. And, and, the, and the problem is this, oh. is that it can happen to anybody. Like we the will, fact okay. that this has not happened, I have never heard of this happening before. So you is a miracle of science. Me, like it literally is. It's that is insane. since we're going down that route, we got to tell our story about what happened in the bathroom on the plane. Well, my story. Well, there was never a wee story on a bathroom of a plane. <laughs> as much as either or both of us would like that, that has never happened. Okay, calm down. I didn't mean to implicate you and get you all uh, riled up. We have a member of the Diarrhea Mile High Club. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to be doing that till. Oh, I'm going to wake up in the call. middle of the night and do okay. my pilot voice. I, I love that. I have a diversion story. we got to share it now. So... Do you remember the year? You probably do. And you probably remember the month and the exact date. But I know we were taking the children to Disney World because as our child son once told us, why would you have kids if you won't take us to Disney World? Remember that? Yes. That was a direct quote. Exactly. So we took him. We were going in. It wasn't spring break this time. I'm pretty sure. Headed to Florida. And I can't remember if he's flying from Portland, Oregon. Long flight. I get migraines. I usually carry um, my some kind of pills on board in my emergency stash. I think I was using Imitrex tablets at the time. And with, lo and behold, we're on this long flight, and I started to escalate my migraine. So we were sitting with the kids in the, about the middle of the plane, and my migraine's getting worse. And I realize my rescue medicine that I use is Toradol, Ketorolac, injectable, you, some of you have probably had it in the hospital. They give it to you as a strong painkiller. And so it's I, in. I carry the checked luggage. Yes. I carry usually a vial and a needle with me so I can give myself a shot in the ass. Um, 
Tim will do it now and then when I'm so out of sorts that I don't want to. Oh, the shot in the ass? Shot. Yes. I'm sorry, that's only on the my birthday. Shut the hell oh, up. sorry, I didn't say that. I did not say you that. You are cut off the potatoes. That, I'm no sorry. More, no more potatoes I, for you. I can't sometimes. Okay. Sometimes, though, you put the ball on the tee and you tell me not to tee off, and I'm like, I just can't. I, have to I, ball. I, I like to test you and see. If I can, know, it's bad. I'm you sorry. You have no restraint. All right. It's, so. it's like Larry the Cable Guy. Lord, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so, no injectable tour at all with me. It's on the. It's checked baggage. All right. So uh, what I tell Tim, I'm not doing well. I'm feeling really sick. I'm going to go to the back of the plane where the bathroom is. And there's a row of seats that are empty. I said, I'm going to go sit back there so I can be close to the bathroom because I think I'm going to be throwing up and I'm not going to do it in a barf bag to gross at the plane. So I get back back of the plane and I'm in there and I'm a little sick and nauseous. Then I sit down. I try to sleep it off. But I'm, when if you have migraines, you just know. Being on a plane, not the place to be. It's hot. I'm not feeling good. I think, I don't know if I got ice. Doesn't matter. So I go to the bathroom again. And this plane had, it was a big one. It had like four bathrooms. So I'm like, eh, people are good. I'm just going to stay in here. They can use the other three because I just don't want to be running in and out being sick. So I stand in this little cubby. I kind of squat down sometimes, but it's gross. Who wants to squat over a airplane toilet so i don't want to touch it really lean on it I'm apparently <laughs> no one flying to barcelona no. so what happens is i start to get a little i'm still sick i get a little woozy i lose my blood pressure because it's low anyway because i'm standing and i kind of just slump down i'm like i'm good i'll just like hover over and the plane lands with and her I, in the bathroom yeah so what happens is I kind of actually at that exact moment so pass out because uh, my blood pressure is low and I'm sick and I, I'm this t- my the pain is excruciating I'm incapacitated I am not budging for nothing the plane lands and then as far as the story goes Tim looks back and he doesn't see me he's getting the kids off and he turns around he says to the flight attendant um, my wife is not on the or plane my wife? or she's in the bathroom yeah. And, and they go, well, says, that can't be possible. And I'm like, well, what I'm thinking is <laughs> if you would have done your fucking job and actually check the bathroom for people, because there's an actual sign that says occupied and actually cleared the cockpit of the aircraft or the anyway, the passenger area, then we would be fine. No, 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 no. She cannot possibly be in the bathroom. Well, guess what? Someone didn't do their job. So she's in there. And then they call the fire department. <laughs> So the firemen show up, okay, Down to potentially the to, runway. Right? Yes, to potentially transport her to the hospital. On. And the kids are like, what in the ever loving hell is going on? But the firemen are in full fireman stuff. Like they have the flame retardant pants, fireman and stuff, the fireman hat, and all the fireman stuff on, right? They're, they're- because because obviously a woman with a migraine on an air on an aircraft is going to explode into spontaneous human combustion and burn the airplane to the ground. So they got to have all their fireman shit on. And I'm like, what in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? So all I, so then I just remember them. So the doors, those stupid things open in, they fold in like the stupidest ergonomically designed things. If you're in there because they're pushing to get it open and I am like out of it. And they're like trying to extract me. Basically, they get me some oxygen. And I just remember them hauling me out of there off the plane. And Tim, basically, at this point, he's they want to take me to the hospital. And he's like, forget it. We're both doctors. I can manage it. We can get our medicine if we can just get our check baggage. Just help us get off of this plane. And we're fine. And they were insisting. I remember that, that I go to the hospital. And the kids are crying. It's like, ah. This We're never going to get to the Nick Hotel. Oh, guess what, kids? Sometimes in life, things are more important than what you want. Anyway. This is what we would call in parenting a teachable moment. Okay, so then what happens is <laughs> I just remember being in a wheelchair, you pushing me, bringing the little toddler. They weren't toddlers. Elementary school age kids. We get to the check bags. And I'm like, okay, I know where it is in the bag. So he splays open the luggage right beside the carousel. Tells the kids to stay there, runs with me into the women's bathroom where I like collapse on the floor. Draw, he draws up the medicine 
And I just remember, well, you said you told the story best. Didn't some lady look at you thinking like we're doing like a heroin injection? And she's basically, honey, is everything OK? Do I need no, to- I'm running in and out of the woman's bathroom, <laughs> which I am like to do and injecting my wife with Toradol, which is like, who cares? Yeah. It's, an, you know, it's an NSAID. And I'm like, I don't care. I just honestly I have traveled. It's it's so brutal, especially with children. And they were absolute angels. They yeah. really were. To to fly from Seattle to Orlando is anyway. not pleasant. Meanwhile, and then of course we get the rental car. May's feeling a little bit better, and then we get lost. We drove into we the- we drove into the Disney County, and, and got right down to what what was it Epcot or uh, I don't know Magic Kingdom. It was not right, magic. Right to the front entrance, and I lost my ever loving shit trying to get out of the it's a hundred i think i think disney's property there is 126 square (sighs) miles yeah so then we were stuck because it's those what roads are one way and uh, like we're trying to go to the nickelodeon hotel which is in like you know it's approximate to disney but it's it's in orlando and we got turned around we'll never get to the nick hotel And, and, and i'm like just kill me. I have a migraine and he's cussing and swearing and dealing with three children at the time. Anyway, we made it and we survived. Well, no, I'm doing I'm dealing with four children because I was actually having to try to my, uh, use my inside voice and <laughs> own okay. my own emotions. So there you go. That's our crazy. I passed out on an airplane story and they called the fire department. And yes, yeah, the what if you migraine asked. mile high club, <laughs> not a club anyone wants to be part of all right so what's the oh okay so before we get to the cocktail of the week photo guest time all right so the winner actually truly is gary jarvis because gary got it right he guessed 2013 and that was the year we also another fun story we won't go share that one now but we bought we bought a motorhome to go to new york city and washington dc with our kids on the uh, junior high trip because we weren't going to pay $2,500 a piece to the school for a 10 day trip. So we bought a motor home. We went. Yeah. So an $80,000 motor home is a way better deal. Oh, you got a good deal out of that. We did. For and it cost us, we owned it for four years and we only lost $5,000 yeah. on the purchase. So, so the it was, photo, we were way of ahead. us at the top of what building was that with the Chrysler bin top, in the background? No, top of the rock. There you go. Top of Rockville. Feller Center. So 2013, we did the trip to New York City and I posted. So we did that. We want you all to sign up for our newsletter, Truth Serum, because we put family, uh, mostly personal pictures and things related to what I read. Not very personal. Tim writes for the week. And um, uh, now I'm off a topic here because you you got me distracted. (laughs) Gary wants a prize other than respect. Really? Uh, check the black box tomorrow on our front porch, Gary, and there'll be a surprise for you. There you go. Uh, but yes, let's actually, give out yes. Our, let's give out our no. I would give, give out our address. No, Gary knows where we live. Okay. He's picked up before. Well, we should do so that. So Gary gets a prize. I I will well, literally we'll put something in there if yes. you really want to pick it up. Um, but basically, in the news, so that I posted online and our social media. Uh, video social Mitch posted that to get you all to sign up for a newsletter, but it was a great trip. The point being that this week was nine 11 uh, Memorial. And I wrote about that and uh, it was really humbling and crazy to go to the. um, Well, we went, we went to the nine 11 Memorial on July 4th, which was like, I'm getting chills now. If you want to freak out, like, Go Team America. That one was, yeah. that was wild. They literally put, again, I, I can almost not say it. They put American flags in the etched names of every single person that passed away mm-hmm. in 9 11. Yeah. And-, and you sit there and you go, wow, dude. I mean, every single name is etched in the memorial and it's hollow. So you can see through it. And then there's the water that falls into the like an platform, infinity. like an infinity pool yes. for the platform of both of the trade centers. That's beautiful. 
and they put an American flag in every single name. Yeah. And you sit there and you just go, holy crap. <laughs> uh, we watched a couple shows and we watched one on how they landed a bunch of planes at Gander, uh, Newfoundland. And when you're talking about the diarrhea episode, I'm, <laughs> I couldn't help but think instead of diverting planes because of uh, 9-11 to Gander, I'm thinking, what if they had to divert because of the explosive diarrhea to Gander? How would, don't, don't, don't do your impersonation again. I'm thinking of, yeah, but they love it. Yeah. I'm thinking of something else to say. Yeah. Anyway. All right, <sighs> Tim, Tim, what is your cocktail um, yes. or a bottle that you've drank already? Uh, yes, because obviously the drunken elves come and drink it at night. No, that's just me. Just like Santa. Elf on a shelf or uh, yeah. is it? Um, I don't know. I don't I know. Come up with another name. Portland potato vodka. This is actually made by East Side Distillery. They are very good. This is really for the price. This is top shelf. In my opinion, it's made with uh, the crystal clear waters coming from Mount Hood. And it really is good. And it even has a potato uh, <clears throat> on the front. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. It's like they squeeze the juice right out of the potato. What a wonderful sponsor to have. Yes. They, Portland well, Eastside Distillery, vodka. people don't understand or understand. They are the distillers of Redneck Riviera. So these celebrities produce their whiskey or whatever it is, and then they go to a existing distillery and get it produced the way they want and east so east side makes this they are awesome i think i've owned their stock in the past hmm. if not i should well i'm a little partial to idaho and you all know if you followed us and i haven't had this since uh i can't remember probably last summer 44 north nectarine and it's sunny slope nectarine i love it with lime, you know, and they make some great flavors. The I think the most popular is the huckleberry. The plain is wonderful. They have a watermelon, and uh, you know, it, as much as I a, think flavored vodkas are dumb, because you should add your own flavoring. This nectarine is a completely different deal. Like they nail, they hit this one so far out of the ballpark, it's ridiculous. Uh, May likes it with lime. a little bit of lime and a little tiny bit of ice to melt and dilute it just a tiny bit. And it really, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, amazing. It's not super sweet. It is beautiful. So, um, yes, yes we good. love 44 North. And, you know, you we feature them you, quite often. You have a couple of those in a martini and you hate people less. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, okay. On to. Which is great. Can you imagine if we got that sponsorship? Drink our vodka, hate less people. I think that's a great slogan. <laughs> we, it probably is. Can, all right. Can you post this photo, this fine gentleman that I sent yes. you to share? Um, Tim, I sent this picture to Tim to share with you all. Oh, sound like I'm living in Good. Texas already. Yeah. Well, you know, we're not going to live in Texas. No, I know. Um, so Tim said to me, who is this guy? Dr. Howard Tucker has been practicing medicine since 1947. He was born in 1922. The average life expectancy then was 58 years for men, 61 years. Whoa, whoa, slow for, down. For Back women. that one up, kids. He's 100 years old. And he's a practicing neurologist. And he got interviewed to ask how he... He's a hundred years old and he still sees patients. Yeah, he's really the oldest practicing physician. This came out in April of 2023. I'm not sure if he's still alive. I didn't look it up, but as of April, well, he was April. I mean, it wasn't like it was not 25. Did I say that? 2023, April 2023. Yeah, it wasn't like yeah. it was 2016. No, April. Mm -hmm. Howard years old. Tucker get, wait, it gets is better. a very old sucker. Get this. It gets even better. Okay. So he was asked what keeps him sharp. So he is um, the oldest practicing doctor by Guinness World Records, received his law degree as well, and passed the Ohio bar exam in his late 60s, was chief of neurology of the Atlantic Fleet during the Korean War. There's a featured documentary about him. And his wife 
is also, uh, I forget how old she is. She is um, still working as well. She's in her 80s, I believe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, she's said the wife is 65 and doing psychoanalysis and psychiatry. So wait, no, sorry. Sarah, my wife of 65 years, she's 89, still practices psychiatry. Yeah, but he's still robbed the cradle. She's still 11 years younger than you. So he was asked the tips on uh, his tips on um, how he could live to 100 and still keep practicing medicine. So here you go. I don't spend my days retired. He continues yep, to work. I agree. He, he treats patients for five to six days a week. Um, then he switched to teaching med students and residents for three days a week. And so now I think he's doing that a little bit. And when he's not working, you know, spending time doing fun things with his grandkids and hobbies like snowshoeing. Oh, my goodness. And watching Cleveland sports. But so he says, pick up a career. Right, that you're still able to do and delay he retirement. He watches Cleveland sports. So clearly depression is something that makes you live longer. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> he does not let himself get out of shape. So he's swimming, jogging, hiking, and skiing well into my late 80s has kept me strong and healthy is what he says. So he doesn't ski any longer, uh, but he tries to get three miles on the treadmill most days of the week. Look at that. Uh, he does not smoke, so um, he lives. He he says that, and uh, but not obviously he drinks tobacco. It's been good for his Portland potato vodka. Yeah. Have you heard of hyperbaric therapy? If you want better circulation, oxygenation, or respiration, turn up the volume. Everyone appreciates the increased energy and clarity. Athletes, say goodbye to those PRs because you're going to blast So how does it work? We load your body with oxygen. That means less inflammation, fewer allergies, faster healing, and more. Come see us, 1200 Executive Parkway. You know, the Upside Down Building. Call us, 541-636-3278. That's 541-636-3278. We have some incredible deals. Heal, build, and thrive with With New Leaf Leaf Hyperbarics. Got air? Number four, he does not restrict himself. He believes in moderation. I'll have a martini and New York strip steak occasionally, but not every day. You should have the New York strip steak every day and the martini occasionally. I totally. But get this. He eats salad, bok choy, Brussels sprouts. Salad is. And broccoli. So, Tim, start eating. Yeah, but it's all, you know, the the problem with these guys. And here you go. Number five, fifth tip. uh, and you can talk. He does not let his knowledge go to waste, meaning yes. he's witnessed so many cool things, you know, from lobotomies to now to CT scans to the tech lead that we have. And he tries to just keep up, keep using his brain, keep sharing. And that's a secret to living to 100 and being sharp. And if you're yeah, lucky, no, if you're I, lucky. So, so I want. I it was cool. No, it's really cool. I, I think that's amazing. I would love to get him on the show. That would be absolutely the funnest thing ever. But the problem okay, is this. Queen D does. Let's see if we can get him. Queen D, it. get him. Go, go get him. The problem is this: is when they like these these scented centenarians or centenarians. I said scented genarians. Uh, they're scented. Yeah. Scented. Yes, they're scented, and it smells. Like mothballs, but they're oh, scented. You're terrible. No, I am terrible. I'm terrible. I'm no, sorry. I'm terrible. I'm like, terrible. It's old spice. I'm on potato juice. Old I'm spice even, and yes, <laughs> exactly. So the problem is this: they they interview these centenarians, and they always have the secret, and the secret is always different because it's whatever they did. You know, I smoked two cigars. I had two. I had four shots of whiskey, and I walked up and down this mountain, and it's just random. And, th- and that's the problem. Now, I think m- mental, I think that there's truth in this, as there is in a lot of this, which is if, if you're mentally engaged as long as you can be mentally engaged and you never retire, in other words, you always have a, a purpose. So you go from one career to another career to, you know, volunteer work or whatever it is, and you always have a purpose for getting up in the morning, those people live the longest. But what if you want to people just drive that, the, the, the lawnmower at the golf course? That's How mentally perfect. engaged is no, that? No, that's perfect. No, but I, I could do that and find purpose in that. I would drive the lawnmower. I would be listening to podcasts. I'd be super mentally engaged in all that because I listen to way more podcasts than I do music. As much as I love music, 
music is a celebration for me. It's not a release no. of my mind. That's you podcasting. You can give advice when you get to 100. 80. Right. And it's going to be, yeah, well, you know, I choose in and I worked out a lot and I lifted lots of weights and I did lots of fun shit. And well, blowjobs really are the reason why I'm 100. It's it doesn't matter. The guys that are that engaged okay, now at you're telling a bunch of BS. Correct. <laughs> the guys that are that old, that are that vigorous. It's just it is literally an accident. I'm sorry, kids. It's an accident. You can do a whole bunch of stuff to live a long and better life, but it's not guaranteed. Yeah. The you only know, thing that's guaranteed that? is if you screw it up, you will have a crap life. You know that's I, guaranteed. I learned that before you said it. So I read the uh, Peter Tia's book. And I always forget the name of books. I'm so terrible. But the one on um, living longer and healthier and you'll probably remember the name before I recall it. But he basically outlive. Yeah, he studied centenarians and tried to. And people have to figure out what's the secret sauce. And there's it is, no code. It's random. It's there's, it's random. It's random. The, yes, the, the issue is. is this: you want to you want to make it to eighty. It's genetics. Actually, the thing the thing that right. they have in common is it's genetics. If your family lives long and healthy, then the the odds. If you have someone that lived to ninety five, a hundred, then the odds. Are in your favor, but uh, that's nothing you can so, teach. So this else. is how I look at longevity, because I think a lot of it is insane. Longe longevity is 80. Make it to 80. If you can live a very productive, healthy life where you're doing the stuff you want to do until you're 80, everything after 80 is like when you're playing the video game and you won and you're in bonus time. So after 80 is bonus time. Now, there's going to be the longevity people that lose their ever loving minds over that. No, we should look to 120. It's like, OK, prove that to me and I'll, like show me show me Brian Johnson, Mr. Like I, you know, laser my face and have 100 days in a row of perfect sleep when you're 120 and I'm dead and in heaven and laughing my ass off at you. I'll believe you. <laughs> But, you know, you're like everyone else. You're going to get fungating ass cancer or God knows what when you're 70 years old and you'd be like, well, I did everything right. And I spent two million dollars a year on long. This guy spends like two million dollars a year on longevity. And I'm like, really? Wow. Tell us how you really feel, Tim. No, I just it, it just it's all unproved and unprovable nonsense. And it might be true. But OK, so if one guy, let's say Brian Johnson, B-R-Y-A-N Johnson, not the real Brian Johnson, who sings why is he, they say the fake Brian Johnson, he spends like two million dollars a year on all this longevity shit. And I'm like, and who's the guy that spends all that money on all those pills? He takes like, no, this is that's Brian. That's Brian Johnson. Is it? Yeah, it's, I it's it, I, no, I thought it it's was completely uh, it's completely it's bonkers. Sick. I'm like, dude, you're bonkers. I'd throw like, up if I ate that many pills. Like, like he has and he, supplements. His, and his supplements are like bowls of supplements a day. Mm -hmm. And then and then we see other guys that we've interviewed, like like Jake Thompson, who's doing great. And he feels amazing and he does all these challenges and does, you know, a lot of carnivore and all of that stuff. Isn't the goal and he's no like, supplements? he's like, why do you need supplements if you're eating right? And I sit there and I go, that actually makes sense. Right. Unless you have a bunch of metabolic because, like I do, where you know, your body is. But but the, I the, got the, bad the problem of this of the family, but you're right. Spiritually for me, less is the what goal. drives me crazy is they're trying to cheat death. You don't get to cheat death. You, you can't biohack your way out of death. And you know what? If you could, who gets the biohack? I will. Who I gets will, the biohack? And I'm going to disagree with you on this. I don't know that they're trying to cheat death. Yes, they are. I think they're trying to cheat painful end of life. No. Nope. Peter Atia is. He, under, he understands mortality. You, you, you. They want, they want to live, 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 nope. and then be done. Uh uh. Not Brian Johnson. He wants to. He wants to. He wants to biohack wants death. To be Moses. Absolutely no. Yeah. Like you. You look at these guys and you're like, this is Tower no, just, of Babel bonkers silly. nonsense. That's just silly. 
And it's just like, that's good. I want to biohack myself into an unbelievably long, painful last 15 years of my life. That's painful now. Where I can't get out of bed and I can't get it up. Fan freaking tastic, baby. No, I want to be the guy that makes it to 80 and then gets all of the bad habits and dies catastrophically five years later. That's a good life. I think you've gotten the bad habits. Well, I shall adopt. You just need to get to 80. All right. On to the next topic. Um, Okay. I don't know what you have for slides for our watching viewers, but um, I found this article. So a friend, let's say, asked me if I had heard that she was getting something cool and new to her home that I use. And I said, oh, is that right? She's getting a new Tesla made bed. Tesla med bed technology generates a field of restorative life force energy to stimulate the cell repair of all cells. And basically these, this is one of the articles I found on these Tesla med beds that people will soon be able to buy they harness quantum energy because um, let me let me find the article that was on Fox 59 about it in, in February. I prefer Fox 69, but that's, <laughs> that's a they, personal They're talking preference. about plasma energy um, and how they harness this fo- the photons and energy just like the electrons in the Earth's gravity uh, because as we all know, astronauts bodies start to decomp when they take off uh, into space and so they're working supposedly with tesla on developing electromagnetic tech as well as trying to heal the body and using pulse okay. electrical magnetic fields p-e-m-f to heal all conditions um and now they're working on frequency based charts that are individualized so you get in this bed and it scans you to restore people back to their normal oscillation or remove the negative ones and this is the core based technology that was developed over 100 years ago that modern day scientists now built their work on uh, uh, sounds I like testing. someone is oh, I need to divert back to someone is trying to rip rich people off because this is bullshit let me keep reading uh, what Fox News please reported please put the mask over your mouth and nose before you one of the newest and more popular devices is called a plasma energy sphere, which uses the foundational <laughs> technology of modern pioneers. It develop- it's like altered states. You go in, you come out, and you're a gorilla. Okay, listen to this. I'm like, what the heck? It delivers frequency codes and uses a dual sphere setup they call phase conjugation, which creates a scalar energy field the person sits in. In addition, the delivery of this energy develop, delivers a cascade of some of the most beneficial frequencies for the body. Okay, so how much does that I'm cost? Like, I, can't I agree even with Gary. Like, this how the hell much money? Twenty thousand like, dollars U.S. Perfect. Unproven technology for twenty thousand dollars. Okay, so I kept looking into it. This is what Wikipedia says: med beds. According to a false conspiracy theory, med beds are secret beds that can miraculously heal humans and extend life. The plausibility of such devices is pseudoscience. Medbed conspiracy theories often involve claims that our devices are utilized by members of the deep state and billionaires that are former presidents that are using these. No, um, Fauci doesn't use a med bed. He uses virgin vampire so various, blood. Various Come on. So there is a company called Medbeds that sell devices or access to beds that supposedly heal ailments via imaginary technologies while including fine print on their dis- websites that says that there's no healing. So get this. Uh, there was a guy. I found it. Here we go. On the BBC. Who wrote about the truth about med beds that the miracle cure does not exist. And look at this. He found one Tesla biohealing facility, which was actually this converted motel in a small town on the Mississippi River. This is their office. Um, and he went in there. Because he made an appointment and he goes into this place. And what happens is the picture, I didn't give it to Tim. Shoot, I should have. The company has placed its containers underneath ordinary beds in these facilities. It looks like a, I don't know, a Motel 6 bedroom. No, 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 he no. Goes, so it he looks goes, way worse than a che- Motel he 6. He checks in and what happens is someone checks him in and he has to, he goes, I go in and I'm invited and I'm told that well, it provides life force energy. And um, he will go in and they use this thing 
pure bio photon life force energy to stream into his body and heal him. And so he goes into this place and they ask him to put his finger in a box and it scans his finger and they read his energy. And then he goes in to the bed and lies there for an hour. Uh, and I'll just skim through all of this. Um, and the canisters supposedly are sealed in a wooden box in a bedside table that he can't open. He's in there for an hour. He tries to like get into the box. This is a pretty fun read. And then he gets out and then they stick his finger in this energy box again. And they said, oh, your your energy vectors are <laughs> much better. And uh, it's all about quantum okay, but, frequency. But you got to understand it's, that. OK, okay so this then is I not... looked up more and there was thing on a Dr. Oz. You saw me looking okay. at that. Well, if Oz talks about it, it's obviously not I'm horseshit. Serious. This is what people. The are guy seeing. lost to Fetterman. The like. Okay, this is what people are saying. So here's the gist of it. On Oz, they had they talked about electromagnetic fields. Yes. And how it's being used, and there are devices that yes. have electrical Correct. Uh, magnets, and it is used already. There's tech that's FDA approved. For arthritis oh, oh, it's FDA in. approved. It must be Stop. not horseshit at all. Uh, it's based off technologies developed by Nikola, Nikolai Tesla. Like the actual Tesla. But not the car Tesla company. Yeah, so they add the name Tesla. Oh, yeah. So Tesla. And a lot of this beds thing is basically like grounding. I We did shows and talked about grounding and using the electrical currents. So it's kind of like grounding mats and these beds say that they scan your body. They'll find all that's wrong with you. Then they pulse you with energy and they'll heal all your things. But what's sad is that people believe that this is real. Of course they and believe, they believe that And real. they buy this stuff and spend $20,000 and that it's coming to their home. I hope you didn't pay for it is if you're listening. And then it's going to cure all aches. Well, here's the problem. So. So while there is some truth, it gets stretched. Right. No, there this. is electro like so there is an actual FDA approved depression device that is a massive, essentially an open MRI that m like wax your head with a ton of magnetic energy. Some of the still and people get less. I mean, yes, get less depressed. It's kind of. A little crazy because you ha you're essentially dependent on going back to the machine. Well, it's like the hyperbaric chamber. Yeah, but yes and no. Like you can go to a hyperbaric cha chamber and hear heal whatever you're dealing with. True. And yes. Then, yes. And like then you're your done. wound is done. You don't right. right. You yes. know, and it's like okay, so it's it's modestly effective. Um, <laughs> uh, like honest to God, I'm like, reading the comments. I'm kind of giggling because you know, poor. Here's Alicia. She says, "I would, I wish I could be rich and stupid instead of just stupid." Um, well, we no, know her. No, you are not stupid. You're not stupid, and you. I'm glad you're not rich and stupid because that would be a big waste to to buy. But the, the, here's the thing: that, it's, so people take some of this tech and they stretch it, and then they find gullible people and they rip them off, and it pisses me off. Well, maybe. When we're in Florida and we're around more rich, gullible people, we can start our own. I, I can't so, do so, it. I can't do it. I don't so have the soul to be that to much of a friend, dirt bag. Uh, med beds. So it's a generic term. If you look it up, med beds is everything. It's like medical beds that have sidewalls in the hospital that prevent people from falling out and that you control from your iPhone to weird shit like this. So um, it. There's no cure bed that's going to fix no, all your ails. Okay. But I have been producing miracles in bed for the last 32 years. Oh, well, wake me up when then when I can watch that miracle. <laughs> oh, all right. Was that? Ooh. It's time to cut you off and end this show. So what's coming up? Oh, do you want to talk about your uh, door smash and dash or should we save that for another time? Um, Yeah, it's 53 minutes. We'll save that. The horrific uh, motor that... vehicle accident that I was in last I'm week. I'm going to put that son. in the newsletter. So if you all Crack. that are here care, you can check it out. Yeah, it's yeah, I we'll think that's a good photos one. to come. It's amazing. We can talk all about forgiveness and not being offendable on our podcast until you get something that really offends you. And then it's like, oh, shit, like texting. I and driving actually have to that hit that offense. I that... actually have to practice what I preach. 
Um, so here we go. Um, we are, st- st- for those of you that ask, look at our studio still intact for the next two weeks. We're still in Oregon soon to be. To not be in Oregon. Flirting. And then we are going to have daily posts from the road whilst we drive across the country trying not to get robbed of all of our stuff. That will be an adventure. So I don't yes, know. Maybe, that's our goal. Maybe uh, the History Channel, <laughs> Lifetime TV, I don't know, or whatever the Kardashians are on will pick us up. If you guys got connections, yes. let us know. Okay. This week on the podcast, tomorrow, Thursday, February. No. Oh, why am I saying February? September. You're drunk. 14th. No, I'm not drunk. Um, Maybe because I'm always in the Valentine's mood, February 14th. Yes. Again. Tomorrow, miracles September in bed. 14th. Today is the 13th. My n- lucky number is Jamie Mo Crazy. All right. This is a cool comeback story. She was an X Games athlete, and she tells her story about traumatic head injury that happened while competing and how she basically had to relearn everything again to talk. Walk, it is. Yeah. And um, her last name was Mousy. And it was so close to crazy. And she was. I think it was Mosey. Yeah. M A U Z Y. Yeah. And then they called her Jamie Mo Crazy on the X Games because she would keep pushing these tricks to the point where. She recently got married and she's super happy and she's back skiing. And it's just an amazing story that her literally her husband said, just change your name to Mo Crazy because that's who you are. Just own it. And I'm like, oh, man, this is so cool. This is a really cool interview. And talk. she talks about traumatic brain injury. And what is so cool about it is that her mom, yeah, her, I mean, a psychologist, um, did some extra um research and was there for her the whole time to advocate for her and help her recover in ways that they never expected. And they've developed a program now that is available online and they will help other family members that are dealing with traumatic brain injury, um, other people that are going through this or that are the family members of people that have had it, brain injury and have tips and tricks of things all kinds of things that she talks about a little bit on the, on the episode. So that is, that is a really fun one. Today's truth bomb dropped and we had a little uh, different episode today where we decided to not get too philosophical, but to actually, uh, I, what, uh, banter, argue slash, uh, what's the word debate? There you go. On. Well, I'm a master debater, so. (laughs) Say that fast five times. Uh, Don't. We debated about taking a tech break. And if you should, what does taking a technology break mean? Tim is getting tears already when he thinks about no TV time. Yeah. So check that episode out today. Um, Other than that, I guess looks like we won't be on YouTube all the time. Um, we hope you guys will look at our podcast on Spotify, YouTube, and the other uh, oh. YouTube, Apple, uh, iTunes. Give us a rating on there because it really helps. And check out Rumble. And yes. Like Rumble is awesome. Rumble has been at the forefront of free speech. They are not scared. They, I mean, it really. We're, we, I cannot speak high, more highly of them. Um, you know, they, they've really done well. I mean, I think I'm going to buy stock because mm-hmm. there's going to be a point where like the, the, the YouTube stuff is completely insane. Like if, if you cannot challenge the World Health Organization, like somehow an international body that's part of the United Nations cannot be challenged, like that is the most freaking big brother you know, George Orwell shit that you can possibly comprehend. You know, you can challenge them and debate it and be wrong and be insane. You still have to have the ability to challenge that. And I I, I, I mean, that just that one is just like, come on, guys, you just showed your hand. It's right. like like you're, you're totalitarian pieces of shit. That's what you've showed. Thank you. Bye bye. Like, I, I honestly, take me off. Whatever. Like, I, you know, we don't have we're not like some of these guys that have been silenced that were literally making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and got kicked off. 
It's like, well, you know, that it even says on there, I read the fine print at that. The fact checkers are often there's some human, but it's mostly they're not. AI. It's AI. They're, they're, it's all AI. Yeah. No matter what your insurance needs are, Set for Life Insurance has you covered. They're a nationally recognized leader in disability, life, and long-term care insurance, serving clients across all 50 states. Their dedicated team specializes in assisting medical residents, physicians, dentists, business owners, and other high-income professionals. It's no secret that medicine is a bit um, uptight. That's why Tim and I created BS Free MD to mix things up a little and have fun in the process. Besides, we are having these exact same discussions all the time, so we thought we might as well invite everyone to the party. If you really like us, you can get plenty more and maybe see one of Tim's cool tattoos on our Instagram or Facebook pages at BS Free MD. See you next time. But we try to keep BS Free MD as raw and real as possible. We can't be held responsible for any medical decisions or discussions had as a result of what you've heard on the show. We know. Bummer. But the truth is, we really do care about your questions. So feel free to reach out to us by email at doc at bsfreemd.com. 